I'm going to finish up about electroretinograms today. Excuse me. About 30 years ago, uh, they were done like I talked about the other day, but about 30 years ago is when they added the colored flashes that I told you not many labs use. Less than 20 years ago, a guy named Eric Sutter invented the multifocal electroretinogram, which I consider the magic of, of visual electrophysiology. Uh, it's a really complicated program that in, in my computer is six million lines of code. And this program extracts from a single signal off the eye the, the electroretinogram from less than each square millimeter of the retina. It's limited to the area you're stimulating. The common area stimulated is the same as a, as a Humphrey 24-2. So approximately 35 plus degrees horizontal, approximately 30 to 35 degrees vertical. Most, most systems uh, are similar to this. There's about six companies in the world that make multifocal systems now. Most of them are like this. A pattern is displayed and there's a chin rest such as this that sets the distance uh, uh, the patient is away. Everybody uses the same stimulus pattern, which I'll demonstrate to you if it runs. Uh, but uh, Sutter alone, his company is what we use. You, those of you that have seen me do multifocals, it's a little box smaller than a cigar box. And, that one is a version of a, of a miniature display. There's different systems. I have this system too, but it, it's not being used right now. It's in storage over on the second floor. The patient looks through that outer box. This has got an advanced thing programmed into it. And then there's a focus knob, in fact, on the left and right sides that has built into it, has built into it, um, plus or minus 10 diopters that the patient can focus for themselves and then I have lenses to, add, to go up to 30 plus or minus 30 diopters for the individual patient. This is the pattern that everybody uses. This is off the video chip in my system. It does, in, in my program that I use, it's, it, which is set by the company, I use that it, the patient looks at this for 30 seconds at a time, and any time at the end of a 30 seconds, they can take a break if they need to, if they need to move or talk or cough or sneeze or anything. I use the Burian speculum contact lenses. I, you can see the uh, patient's eye on my monitor like this. So you can coach the patient about maintaining fixation. I don't know why I have birdshot right there, but it's as good an example as any. The magic about the multifocal electroretinogram is that you can map with an accuracy of each of these little hexagons. You get an electrical signal from the, each of these hexagon areas. This is the big blind spot or the blind spot and it maps any areas of the retina that are deficient in function of regardless of what the cause is, from as unusual as a one millimeter bleed in, in a patient, a uh, pregnant woman with hypertension, to detached retinas, to um, mystery scotomas in the retina. Just some, just some examples here. It, you can also get similar patterns for time, and that's what these are. Different disorders vary whether amplitude or time, implicit time, are delayed the most. That's interesting. Weird. How do I get rid of that? Is that F5? Or do I have to do it here on the screen? What made it happen? Mm. Weird. It gets Monday morning to the computer also. You guys will learn more about birdshot when you rotate through uh, Vitaly and Shakur's clinics.
The multifocal is really good to follow individuals such as with macular degeneration. It is not used to make the diagnosis, it's not necessary, and so except in studies, usually multifocal electroretinograms aren't ordered. The, these are the electrical signals from multifocal electroretinograms from a person with macular degeneration. You can see that interpreting these is not rocket science. It's where's Waldo? Do they look like these outer, this, which are normal, or do they look smaller than they should be in the area that's affected? This is a color transformation, which is simply changing the B wave, quote unquote B wave amplitude of the multifocal electroretinogram to a voltage in a color scale. Normals on the lower right. Really good use, and the most common use, at least here, for multifocal electroretinograms is Plaquenil. Ten years ago, I might, not, might see a Plaquenil patient every couple of weeks. I see Plaquenil patients sometimes two or three a day. Not every day, but that's how common the use is for Plaquenil now. The great thing about the multifocals, it'll pick up abnormalities in the retinal physiology up to a year before a patient would notice, clinically notice, the problem. Much, much, because visual fields depend on attention, and um, most, as you, if you surely learned by now, patients hate visual fields. I, I have had patients come to my door when they're going to do a full field electroretinogram and see my Gonsfeld and freeze and say, no, no, I, I've had that. I, I don't have to have that. No, not again. Plaquenil produces and chloroquine produce the classic ring scotoma. Can vary a lot in its, in its expression in the individual. This is a person with Plaquenil toxicity showing these islands of areas affected. Only one in, say, making this up, one in five of individuals with toxicity show the classic ring scotoma. Probably because you're getting them at different stages in the toxicity. Oh, I thought I had some, I had some better ones. Some do though. I'm gonna, have, I'm gonna add, uh, add to this. This is a seizure medication. You can also do ring analysis of the multifocal electroretinograms where each of these traces, one, two, three, four, five, six, represents the average of each of these rings starting with one being in the middle. So normal is the dark one and then the red one is the, is the patient. What's good about this, it, particularly for detecting toxicity with Plaquenil is you might have one as normal and then two or three would be abnormal, and then four, five, and six go back to normal again, showing the, the ring effect. And sometimes you can see it in the traces, and sometimes you can't, so I always look at these, because sometimes this picks it up that it wasn't apparent to just visual observation of the, uh, of the traces. It'll pick up anything that's a visual field defect that originates in the retina, regardless of the etiology involved. Here's the 32 of a patient. Here's their multifocals. Let me go back again. Here's the Humphrey on the patient. Here's their multifocals. This is the color transformation in the same patient. Normal's the lower right. You can map detachments. Conspicuous upper right there. Trauma, small detachments. What you, what you got over there, Mao Ling? <laughs> Go 
go out for, this is golf in Chinese. Uh, a guy here in Salt Lake City was hitting a bucket of balls and about 10 feet out in front of where he was, from where he's hitting the balls was a little tiny concrete edge, <laughs> lip, down at the ground. He hit a golf ball and it came back and hit him in the eye. There's his left blown pupil, which stayed blown. He, he was a salesman, so he got a uh, artificial uh, contact with an artificial pupil, so he wouldn't look so weird. There's his Humphrey 32. These are his ERGs, again, back to the Humphrey. There's the ERGs, and here's the color transformation. He was really lucky. It completely spared the fovea, so he, was, he remained 20-20 in his vision. He just had this little field defect that went from about three to five degrees outside the, the fovea up towards nine or 10 o'clock. That was his field. It's good for Azor, the particular person I'm gonna show you. Uh, was at the time he was 17, and it appeared a week or so after episode of flu. Here's his visual field with his multifocal superimposed. It, we didn't get him f until he was about a month out. He was from northern Montana, and he ended up here in about a month. And at least since then, which was now about four or five years ago, he's never changed. He comes back once a year. It's completely static. Over here is the blind spot. So you have a really good patient like this. You get very good agreement between the fields and the, and the multifocals. Small central scotomas. I'm just going to race through here a detachment. Small bleed during the episode of high blood pressure. Ah, I think it's, I can't even tell from here. I think it's up here. Does that look right? Let's see. There's the color transformation of it. Multiple sl central scotomas. Detachment. And again, uh, there's, this, there's even a video of how to do these on web vision that's embedded in it as a link uh, where the multifocal section starts. Okay.